everybody. So this is the first official live stream as now we have hit over $1,500 on the Patreon each month which is awesome uh, and that largely goes to us now getting uh, a professional sponsor which is brilliant so they're donating in the professional sponsor category uh, and it is realestate.com.au which is uh, a real estate company in Australia that deals with doing VR walkarounds of real estate property so they're investing uh, at that sponsorship level which is absolutely awesome so thank you very much to them um, think of any other announcements there is another big announcement if anyone is going to unite Europe which is the unity conference in Amsterdam I think on the 27th to the 29th of June I will be doing a talk there on VRTK so I think I'm on the 29th at 11 o'clock on track 4 if you go and check out the unity unite uh, website they've got their schedule up there now um, so I think it's the, the Thursday at 11 o'clock I'm doing the VRTK talk. It's probably going to be for beginners or newbies or people that don't know what VRTK is to give kind of like an introduction to it. It's not really a workshop or anything. But I am planning on doing some workshops um, coming soon, uh, predominantly within the UK obviously. But I'm also looking to do... Uh, potentially a workshop with something to do with the Seattle VR family so um, maybe do something remotely I don't know uh, so if you do wanna if you are new to VR development and VR TK then one of these workshops may be very useful to you um, other than that how is everybody does anybody have any questions before I start rambling on about anything if you do have any questions feel free to throw them my way this Q and A live stream will be. I'll be doing every Sunday at eight pm UK time, um, and we'll just we'll see what they turn into, how we shape them moving forward. For this one, it's kind of just going to be Q and A, maybe show some features off of VRTK. Um, but you know, it's really a live stream for for you guys. So if you wanna tell me what you want to see out of these live streams then let me know or if you just got any questions you want answering just feel free to ask away in chat and I'll uh, I'll get to you um, whilst we're waiting for some questions let's see if there's any new things in VRTK on the github master version that people may not be aware of um, a couple of things that have been done recently from Vera. Oh, if I go into uh, basic object growing, will networking ever be focused? No, probably not. Uh, VRTK won't focus on networking within networking. Uh, sorry, within VRTK because there are so many different networking plugins. It's very difficult to make that generic. So what people are doing already is they're setting up their own repositories to show how to do VRTK networking with like Photon, Pun and, and things like this. So there's a couple of repos already which I can find the links and I'll post in chat in a bit. Um, but it's not going to be part of VRTK. What do you want to do? Show how to to do join grab point snapping from example for 41. Uh, let's go to example 41. Uh, the freedom locomotion system, is that the one with the robot? As far as I'm aware, I've not used it, but as far as I'm aware, all of the locomotion systems that are in that are in VRTK already, I think. What's what does it do that VRTK currently doesn't do? Maybe a better way of asking. Uh, right, let's have a look at this seed as well, the snapping seed. So what do you want to know about this snapping nedge craft? What are you trying to do? How to set one of these things up? 
put this in there. So I've got a bigger window. Are you, are you trying to f figure out how to create a snap drop zone from from nothing? Because we can do that quite easily. You want to make a menu where you put a USB in the slot and then detect the USB is in the slot. Ugh, links blocked, Tyler. I don't know how to allow people to share links. I'm not very good with <laughs> this. You, I'm sure you can give people like uh, I don't know how to do it. You can give people the ability to share links. If you want to post the green uh, green, if you want to post the link in the Slack channel, I'll post it on your behalf if you want. Who's sending me messages? Oh, best sh close. Google down, otherwise I keep getting messages. Um, right, so you want to make a menu. So all you need to do for your your snap drop zone thing is if you were to go into the prefabs folder um, and then find the snap drop zone, drag it into your scene wherever you want it to be. So let's say there. Um, and now all we want to do is say which highlight object we want to use. Well, we're, we're going to use this cube. Um, so I'll drag and drop that into there so that's now going to be our snap drop zone there I'll bring him forward a little bit let's put him here otherwise I'm not going to be able to reach it um, so all we've done is said this is the thing that we want to drop in there we don't want a duration on it and we do want a policy list because we want to say what things can be dropped in there and I think this has already got a tag of cubes on so I'm just going to add uh, a policy list to this and we'll say only include things that have got the tag of cubes. Okay, so you want three, uh, well the, the snap drop zone will always be the same, you just need to know what Thing you've put in there I'll we'll, we'll get to that in a minute hang on I'll show you so the the port is a snap drop zone and the different USB sticks are gonna have a different representation when they're dropped in it I'm guessing is that what you're saying well, I'm glad you're enjoying it Jeff Jacobs that's uh, what I like to see people getting started nice and quickly yeah, loading scenes and job simulator. Okay, so that's yeah, that's uh, straightforward. So what we can do is this is how you set that up. But let's ignore this for now because you obviously, uh, I'm guessing you know how to set that up anyway. So let's delete this and let's just say we'll work on this one. So ah, where have I just gone? <laughs> let's zoom back. No, uh, oh, I'm pressing on button. That's what. Actually, let's work on this one. So this can take in uh, da, 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 da. this can take in a policy list, and it can take in uh, things that are either got the tag of sources or other sources. So that's uh, got the tag of sources, and that's got the tag of other sources. So when we drop either of them in there, um, we're gonna get an event. So if I just bring that back up. So let's load up the snap drop zone script. And where are the events? So when you drop something in there, you get object snapped to drop zone. And in the payload for that, you get the snapped object. So let's do something where we're just gonna dump something out based on that. Uh, so let's create um, a very simple script and we just stick it on the same object to see it. So we just, we'll call it level loader level loader and we want to put it on this object damn it we want to put it on here so there's our level loader script let's open up the code
Uh, I can also do a grabbable door there easy enough because that's already in as a default thing. Um, ah, okay. I've got the link. Copy link address. This is the link, by the way. Um, <clears throat> right. So, what we're going to do in here, new, is we're just going to listen. Uh... In on enable, we're going to set these things up, but we also need to say in here if we just look at um, one of the other scripts, for instance, like uh, anything in on enable, and now I believe you have to tell the SDK manager about it. So if we just go into Say pointers, um, destination marker, does it, I think. Does it have an awake? No, it wouldn't be that one, would it? Uh, pointer, do you have an awake? If I can't find it, I'm just going to search. There we go. So we just have to add this in the awake. So. We're going to add an awake, can't be bothered with that, and we're just going to call that straight on the VRTK namespace, and then we also need to destroy that accordingly, as you'll see in here, on destroy, not that, it's on destroy, isn't it? So, on destroy, this is just a bit of pre-setup, so we can do some thinking on enable. Right, now in on enable, what we want to do is basically um, get our snap drop zone and listen for that event. So I'm just going to do it easily by doing get component VRTK snap. Let's do it. Let's add a using. Using VRTK. I don't have to do that. All that. And I can just do it. FK snap drop zone because we know it's on there and then we want to do it uh, snap so object snapped to drop zone so when the object is snapped that's going to give us some information uh, and if we just debug log e uh, snapped object name for instance so what's going to happen now is when we snap something in there, actually what we want to do as well is we want to we want to unregister this when we disable that script as well. It's always worth unregistering when you register. This is also not the best way of doing this, but I'm just doing it uh, quickly and simply. What are you saying? Can I please? public the script I don't know if you're talking to me or somebody else right so now if we're to drop something in there we should just get a simple debug log so let's turn the control on why did you just turn yourself off right uh, let's run the scene Is it working? Yeah. So, if I pick this one up and we drop him in here, so you say it says flying saucer highlight on touch. Whoa. My Viva's just gone crazy. I think my cable's just busted. Uh, let me stop it. Man, what's happened here? I'm just going to have to restart Steam VR. Uh, <laughs> so I can just see lines. Uh, let's hope this is a Steam VR problem and not something with the hardware. Reboot Vive headset. Hey, Arcade VR. Anyway, so we could see that that told us that. So now we now what we need to do in here is we can. You could do a very very simple if statement if you wanted. So we know one's going to be called uh, Flying Saucer Highlight and Touch, and the other's called Other Saucer Highlight and Touch. Um, 
Oops, it ain't me. What am I doing now? I want to copy that. Uh, so, like, just really, really simply, you can do if this uh, load level one. I mean, you can add your own logic in here, and this is not the best way of doing this, but it is a way of doing it. Other source of highlight on touch, I think it was called. Yeah. Right, let's see if my uh, headset has fixed itself. Yes, good. No hardware problems here. So, now all we'll do is We've got that uh, snap drop zone. We've set up an event to listen to it. Now, this could be like USB stick one, USB stick two, or whatever you want them to be. Um, and then if I put this one in there, you can see it says load level one, so that would then do your load code. My headset's not really funny. It's like it's not tracking properly. Um, and then if we were to put this one in there, it should say load level two. So that's how you can use snap drop zones to do that thing, uh, how they load levels with Job Simulator. If you so wished, you just get the object that you've dropped into it and then do something based on what object has been dropped in. Hope that's answered your question. I'm guessing it has. Great. Um, did somebody ask something else that I missed? Oh yeah, that was it, grabbable door. Okay, so grabbable doors are easy enough if we go into the examples and then go into the controls, uh, controls overview. Um, there's actually a bunch of these already in here, hidden. Um, I mean, I can't, you mean this script, there's not really much to it. It literally is that. I'll leave it on for a bit and you can just pause the video if you want, <laughs> but uh, I mean I wouldn't recommend doing it that way, that's just how I of doing it, I would clean this up so I'm getting these from references and that sort of stuff. The only thing that you probably need to be aware of is when you're doing anything in, on enable, it's always worth registering that uh, with the SDK manager. Um, I'll show you the door thing now. Uh, so in here there's a bunch of hidden things that I use for testing. Um, and there's some doors here. And if we look at these doors, all they are is the, the door itself has a VRTK door script on it. We don't have to worry about this control reactor, that just updates these numbers. So let's get rid of some of these. So let's get rid of this script. And we'll get rid of the displays. And there's that other one. Door not display. There we go. Um, and the frame is there just to kind of like uh, make it look pretty. So if you create a, a game object, an empty game object, uh, that just has the, the uh, VRTK door script on it. Um, Uh, that one, Jeff Jacobs, is if you're using the Unity Asset Store version, it's because Steam VR is broken in Unity 5.6 where it doesn't show the uh, controllers. It's an issue with Steam VR. You have to add update poses yourself manually. If you go to the Slack channel, uh, invite.vrtk.io, and ask that question, someone will point you to the right thing. Um, but it's a Steam VR issue. Anyway. So the doors, so this is an empty game object with the VRTK door script on it. You tell it what your door object is. In this case, it is literally just um, a green cube. And you also tell it uh, the handle. So the handle is this game object. And that is just a couple of spheres with a cylinder between it. And doesn't have anything else on it. And you can also tell it a frame, but I haven't bothered telling it a frame. And then all you do is when you run the scene, uh, we'll see what happens to this object. So 
you can see in here now this door here has been automatically added a hinge on it it's added a force on it it's done all the things that you need it to do um, so if I just teleport over to that door spin my chair I can't remember which way this door opens or it opens that way that's fine so you can see, just putting, adding that door script on, we've now created an open, openable and closable door that will slam shut. And then we can, uh, whoa, crazy copy and paste. Uh, we can then change things on there as well. Like if we wanted to have the door open both ways, we can do open inward, open outward. And if we teleport back to it, opens that way, opens that way. So it's on a double hinge now. And if we only wanted the door to kind of like open outwards, obviously we can, if we stop that and we say don't open inward, uh, and you can also change other things like the, the friction and all this sort of stuff. Go over here now. Oh no, it's the other way, isn't it? It was already on open outward. Open inward we want. So we can open it that way now and it will slam shut. And there's all sorts of different things you can do with doors as well. Like here, down here, we've got this little trap door. So we can lift that up. And it's just a door thing as well. But this is this is great scene for the controls. Um, there's all these different controls on here for, for doing things. You can see uh, that you can also put auto, uh, what are they called? They've got, what's it called again? interact to an out grab but it's called an oh, I can't remember what the thing's called but you can I don't have to even do it if it just push into it and it pushes the door and there's these wheels as well which are kind of like a a valve type thing they're all set to restrict but you can have them free spinning and all sorts so there's a, a ton of cool controls already in VRTK for you to use if you so wish Yeah, it's the update poses thing. Um, but as I say, if you go into the Slack, if you're using GitHub Master, VRTK fixes it on your behalf because I don't think uh, Steam are going to, or Valve are going to release a fix anytime soon. So the latest version of VRTK fixes it. And version 3.20 of VRTK, which hopefully will be coming to the Asset Store soon, uh, will have those fixes in as well. So there's a few things that needed to be done before 320 is ready but hopefully it'll be ready soon so we, we shall see uh, there's a few more bug fixes and then a couple of other features that i want to get added in but there's definitely a few bug fixes that i want to do uh, let's bring up github and i'll go through them uh, So if I bring this up and we look at the milestone for 320. So this is something that needs fixing. Uh, there is a fix for it now where certain certain uh, ray casts within things like the body physics and that were hitting trigger colliders. So that there's a PR up to fix that. Um, there's an issue as well where any script you disable when you run the scene, it automatically enables it again that's not the best choice let's go to the teleporter one because that doesn't do any, any any script that you uh that needs registering with the sdk manager will re-enable itself so that's disabled but you can see it's re-enabled there that's because something in the sdk manager the new sdk manager setup is uh re-enabling things so that needs fixing um this is something I want to do as well. So every action that happens in VRTK, I want to throw uh, an event for it as well. So you don't have to be listening for bulls or anything like that or doing things in an update. Everything uh, that ever happens, you can also get an event with it. You can see here there's a lot of things that already um, need adding to. So that's something I want to do as a new feature. Um, there's another issue with climbing as well. You can't 
stand on top of something without the the uh, heart adjust teleport kicking in and, and teleporting to the top of that object. So that's something else that I want to fix. Um, and there might be some other things that get fixed as well in there, but they're the ones that are definitely going to get fixed. If you look at the bugs, um, that's probably not going to get fixed maybe that will get fixed you can't scale the camera rig up without the pointers going a bit funny at the moment um without disabling and re-enabling and that would fix it but it's not a good fix um that one's definitely going to get fixed there's this issue where you grab to the pointer tip that's probably not going to get fixed for the next one because it's really annoying this one won't get fixed because it's annoying um that's probably not going to get fixed either so there's a few things that are, are going to be fixed for the next release but some some things are going to continue afterwards but what we're going to plan to do is when we do 3.2 3.2.0 we're going to have it so there's a new releases branch and then the master branch is just for uh bug fixes as well so we're going to be able to do uh we're going to be able to roll out a lot more bug fixes to the asset store than we've done in the past uh well there's an issue for that raised already this thing where you um this one where you can walk up you can walk up walls and stuff um it's a problem with the way the heart just teleport is just moving you up and down uh, based on the ride so that needs fixing um, there's no there's no solution for it yet but it will get fixed but not for 3.2.0 oh, somebody's here to steal subscribers yeah I'm not going to subscribe to you but thanks for stopping by Um, right, while we're waiting for some questions, let's see if I can see what else has been added that's new. That's what I was going to show you, was the thing that Vera added. So there's a little uh, feature in VRTK. Um, if we just delete the interactable objects of these and this and this. Right, so previously, there was this feature in uh, VRTK. If you go to Window, not Window, is it Window? Yeah, it's Window VRTK, and then Set Up Interactable Object. You can, uh, rather than adding all those scripts yourself and everything, you can literally pick from here, and then you just click um, Set Up, and it will create all those things for you, as you can see. Uh, but you could only do it one object at a time so Vera's now made it so you should be able to do it on multiple objects so if we do that you can see it's done it on multiple objects for us so that's a nice little thing that Vera has added um, is there a way to decide which layers can be interacted with right now my objects need to be on the default layer to be picked up um, Love to see scene switching. Oh yeah, I can show you scene switching. Uh, next scene, next scene. I'm pressing space by the way. Wow, too many questions coming in. Saying that now. Um, right. No. Reload, whatever. What was that question? I missed another question. I can't figure out where I'm going. Uh, so you're saying you can only pick things up when they're on a certain basic object grabbing. Let's just sort this out. I tell you what I want to do actually. I think Vera added a new. No, I haven't merged it yet. I don't think. 
Did I not merge that? Who's sending me messages on here? Uh, pull request. I thought I merged the. Oh no, I haven't merged that yet. I was going to look at that. Right, ignore that. Too many questions. Right, let me have a look at this thing from Hello Bard with the picking up. So, you say if you put that on any other layer, you can't pick it up. Is that what you're saying? I'm wondering if that's because that layer that you're adding it to doesn't have collisions valid on it or something. So, if we look at that one and put it on that test layer. No, it works for me. Have you turned off collisions? Um, wherever they're stored, I don't know where they are. Is it, ah, right, one question at a time. Right, okay, so that's working for me since which we did what's the best way to add custom controller that still uses all of the Vive controller buttons is it just switching the uh, custom controllers as an example scene for it uh, da, 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 custom controller model and if you look at this where are they there? around here somewhere I think there they are so they're just uh, models here that are a child of the uh, the script alias object. So if you look here, um, not here, here. No, it is there. The Steam VR. So hand and hand are the model aliases that have been manually set. And then all you do in here is you make sure you turn off the models that are in here. And then when you run the scene. Uh, you get uh, a custom hand model which follows survive around and interacts accordingly. So that's how to do a custom hand model simply. Uh, right, what was the next one? Is there a way to have physic controller but simulated HUD? Uh, probably not, no, because the the simulator um, is its own complete camera rig and if you were to turn on uh, actually yeah you, you kind of can is that there's an old script called a simulator um, so if we were to do that on here I can't remember you put it now let's just go to uh, the grabbing one again so um, if we just create another script in here quickly and then put on here the VRTK simulator. So this is an old script that just allows you to move the camera rig around with the WASD keys as you can see here. Uh, how do you go left? So you can, you can rotate it and then the controller should pick up in it anyway. But you still need the uh, the headset and everything plugged in. But it allows you to move around the scene quite easily without actually having to uh, get up and walk around. So that may help you. Uh, what's the best way to test for player collisions? If you have an enemy projectile, uh, the best thing to do for player collisions is use the the body physics colliders. So the body physics, uh, let's have a look at what I'll use it, touchpad walking. So the body physics script gives out um, an event when the collider is hit. Uh, if we look here. Uh, where is it? Body physics event. So you get a start colliding and a stop colliding. So when anything starts colliding with the uh, 
the body physics colliders, it will send out the start colliding event, and obviously when it stops colliding with stuff, it will send out the stop colliding event. Um, so you can use that to listen to when something's collided with it. That's probably the best thing to do. Um, a custom controller model. On you oh, you mean like um, the Vive controller, actually, the Vive wand? Uh, the only way you can do that is if you if I run this and then we go into steam vr and then the camera rig and then controller and then model it's on one of these i think it's on body so if you look at body it's got this mesh render on it this is streamed in at runtime if you do something in like uh, when the controller's ready and you update this uh material here so go into this material and update this to point to something else it will swap out the me uh, it will swap out the texture that's being used, but you have to do it at runtime. Um, you can't do it like at edit time. So you have to write a bit of a script to do it. That should work. The inside of my Vive box smells beautiful. It smells like roses because um, I keep chocolate in it. Uh, how can you change? Axis scale grab action so the scale is pivoted from the first controller. It currently pivots from the interactable object center. Uh, that's probably a detailed question for uh, this live stream. Um, there's actually an, an issue with doing that as well. Uh, if I remember that's how it worked originally, is uh, it would get it from where the controller grabbed, but then you'd have issues of where you you then wanted to rotate. You then wanted to scale it back down. It missed it, so um, the code was changed. So it would go off the center, so it would it would work better uh, more often than not. But if you wanted to change it, you probably have to hack that code. How to do an object combiner? I don't know what an object combiner is. Soz. Um, what works great? Scaling stuff. Uh, ask somebody at Valve how they did it and get the codes and then write a pull request to make it better. Would be a good idea. The uh, the scale stuff, the two-handed stuff, was only like implemented really quickly. There's a lot of work that needs to be done on it, but like with most things in VRTK, it's finding time to do it. If somebody else wants to take it on and have a go with it, uh, then you know, great. That's obviously the the point of VRTK is to get as much community support as possible. Uh, and get as many people building and fixing stuff. Don't kind of try and rely on me to fix it all and do it all because I don't have, I don't have time unfortunately to fix everything. I'm doing the best I can with the time that I have available. Tutorial on a sliding door or a wall with a secret button. Um, a sliding door. Portal support. Um, there's loads of portal stuff already out there. There's a good one by HTC, I think, isn't it? HTC have a good Unity plugin for portals. You have two pets, and on first have a hammer, second have a glass. Oh, right, you mean um, like some way of combining things just have an area where you put things a trigger where you put things and when two things are put in there delete those two objects and add the new object um, I don't have uh, a joystick but somebody did a blog post on how to build one in VRTK let me see if I can find it it's something that probably should get pulled in at some point Rig and a joystick. 
Oh, here we are. It's already in the issue. So we have the issue open already. And somebody did a blog post in there for how to do it. Which is quite cool. And if somebody wants to port that into VRTK to make it standard, feel free. Go nuts. Yeah, that's it. The Vive Stereo rendering does support all stuff. Which seems like a good asset. You know, VRTK isn't, doesn't need to do everything if somebody already is doing it well. Um, VRTK is kind of like trying to bring things together that are disparate um, and don't really work well with other things. So it's like a, a one-stop shop to do everything. But if they, their portals already work, then there's no point in having VRTK do it as well. What do you mean teleport animation? I don't know what a teleport animation is. <coughs> cough, cough. Updated object snapping. Uh, no, not that I'm aware of. Uh, the, as I said earlier, the ones that are going to be in the next release are um, these ones. That's the priority for the next release. But you can look at all the priorities if you go to the waffle page. That's kind of like uh, the closest route right to priorities, but it can it can change. So if you look at Waffle, you can see these are all the the things in the backlog. These are the things that I'm going to be looking at next, and these are things that are kind of in a priority order. So to look at priorities, best to go to Waffle IO back. Uh, Kanban board and have a look at what's going on in here. Um, jump gesture. Depends what you mean by jump. You know, like physically jumping up and down. Um, I know somebody's working or was working on uh, a pull request for that in VRTK, uh, having jumping. I did implement a version of it once, um, and. <laughs> it wasn't very good. It didn't work brilliantly. Um, so teleport animation, when you teleport by VRTK, plan animation around you. It depends what you mean by animation. You mean like particles or something? With the new SDK manager, is there a virtual camera rig or alias? to the active camera rig so your code doesn't need to know which camera rig is active you don't need to know which camera rig is active why does it why do you care about that uh blue rain yes actually you know the uh vr uh, the shooter tutorial by unity you know the one, the nightmares thing where they come at you. I'm going to do a, a t tutorial video on that of turning that into a VR game using VRTK. So hopefully that will uh, help out with that. I'm going to keep up the good work, sweetie mortgage, just for you. I'm going to keep it up all day. You want an object to follow the Okay, we can do that, that's easy enough. So if we go and look at one of the example scenes that already does this, uh, which is always nice when the example scenes do it. Um, so if we look at the uh, this one, 
and we start this and if we just go to this actually let me stop this and I'll split these into two and start this again um, so we've got this head quiver as you can see it's not on the uh, camera rigs but wherever I move we can see it's moving around and the way that's done is the headset script has this transform follow on it and you say what you want it to follow and we want it to we want it to follow the headset follower game object and we want it to change this and the headset follower game object is just using the SDK object alias it just says I'm an alias of the headset so whenever you switch these around this will automatically switch for you so you don't need to care about the uh, the camera rig stuff you can just set up object dialysis to things like the headset and to the, the uh, boundary which is the play area uh, and for controllers you don't need to because you can just use the script aliases which get tracked anyway um, how to dash to the nearest place to teleport like you only have four placed Uh, KJM, are you on the Unity Asset Store version? Uh, let's just have a look at this teleport one quickly, the dash teleport. So you're saying you want to go... Um, I can only ta I can only dash a certain distance, is that what you're saying? And then you have to wait for your, your dash to build back up. Is that what you're trying to say? Yeah, the asset store, if you update to the GitHub version, that's been fixed in the GitHub version, KJM. Have drop zones allow infinite instances of the snapped object? Why wouldn't it allow infinite instances? Or what do you mean? Yeah. Oh. Okay, so what well, you snap an object and then you pick it up, but the object stays snapped, you just want to clone it. Thanks for stopping by our silence. Okay, so what you could do with that potentially is listen for the. Um, I'm trying to think what the best way to do. So you're thinking like a, a holster or something. So. What you want to do is you want to snap it, but then when it's snapped, kind of like turn off the ability to ungrab it maybe I'm not sure the best way to do that that's something I have to have a think about if you raise a github issue asking that that's something we can pick up um, outside because I can see that being useful for people that want to create like an inventory and you drop like a, an ammo clip into the inventory which goes into the drop zone but then every time you pick it I think uh, Hot dog, horseshoe, and hang on to whatever it's called does that, doesn't it? When you drop something in there, you can keep picking it out, and then it and it stays in. So if you raise a GitHub issue with uh, kind of like the feature that you're looking for, I'll look into getting a way of making that work because I can see that being very useful. Yeah, well, the quivers diff. Well, yeah, I suppose yeah. If you've got um. If you want to drop something into there, but the, the way the quiver in quiver works and the way it works in uh, VRTK is it just spawns them when you grab out there. But if you raise if you raise the issue, we'll look at 
make it so snap drop zones can also do that because I can see it being useful for a snap drop zone as well. You only have four points allowed to teleport to, but instead of displaying red, the cursor points to the nearest available. Are you talking about like um, a cursor snap? So like you you point near one. And rather than the pointer going where it's directed, it just snaps to the nearest location. Uh, William Tucker, you probably need to provide uh, custom colliders. Uh, if you look on here, in this example scene, 32, on the hand, it's got a, a custom hand collider and it's also got a custom grab attach which is a rigid body and then on the uh, interact touch we provide it that collider and on the interact grab we provide it that custom grab attach point without those it won't work so have a look at that and if you're missing those you'll need to add them in and if you look at them the, uh, the colliders are just literally colliders of the area that will be considered a collider and the attach point is just a rigid body uh, of where you want things to attach to which will be like there Does that help you? I'm hoping it does. Right, it's got a bit quiet in the chat again. So let's have a look at some other things that uh, may be relatively new until somebody asks a new question. So we did the um, new window. Oh, new question. What can you expect from Unite? Well, I'm going to be there, um, which is cool. What do you mean by telekinesis? You can already do that, KJM. Um, I'll show you. So basic object grabbing, we just stand the basic object grabbing scene, uh, and then on the right controller, if we had a pointer, pointer, and we'll add the renderer for that. And we'll just use straight pointer renderer. And if you say uh, interact with objects and grab to pointer tip, for instance. Um, and then, if I just wheel back a little bit because I'm a bit too close. Now with our pointer, we can grab things and we can move it around. So if we throw that away, we can pick him up and drop him back down. So you can already do that. And if you wanted to turn off the pointer, you could also turn off the visibility of the tracer. So it's like you're just grabbing stuff uh, with the force. So if we were to turn that off. Maybe leave the cursor on, so you can see where you where you grab in. Um, pull it back again. So, whee. so that just makes it a bit easier to see where you're going to grab, I guess. But you can turn the cursor off as well. And if you wanted to not grab to the point of tip, let's say you wanted to snap things to your hand. So I think they do this in Robo Recall. I know they did it in Bullet Train. So if you don't do grab to point a tip, and let's say we turn that off as well, uh, and run this. So if we turn grab to point a tip off, if now you can see um, whatever I'm kind of pointing at, it's highlighting. If I just grab it or snap it straight to my hand, like that. So, and then you could like affect the the length of it, so only certain things, at a certain distance, could be grabbed. Oops. So that's pretty easy to do. Um, what can you expect from Unite 2017? Um, I don't know. I'm going. I'm going to be there and I'm doing a talk on the Thursday uh, on VRTK, but it's a very beginner's talk about what 
uh, VRT can offer and stuff like that, um, rather than like teaching anything about it. So um, I don't know. I'm going. So I've never been to one before. I can't really tell you if they're any good or not. No, but when you teleport and have policy list and you teleport to not teleport available, it not display red cursor. I'm not entirely sure what you're saying. Are you saying when you let me let me load up the destination point example scene? So, are you saying here that so that one doesn't teleport to, but that does? So are you saying here that when I'm pointing the cursor here, rather than having it red, because I'm close to this one, snap the pointer to there. So even if I'm not pointing at it, even if I'm not pointing the controller at it, if I'm pointing the controller that way, the pointer still snaps over there. Is that what you're saying? Have a good day at work, Players Club VR Studios. Thanks for stopping by. if that's what you are saying about this snapping thing there's no way of doing that at the moment because you can't determine the cursor is based on a ray cast rather than you place the cursor um, so you probably have to write your own custom cursor thing and then they have to have big areas on them to determine uh, like what was its nearest snap zone like even if you did this, like you could make this bigger, uh, maybe. But then you're just gonna. It doesn't snap to the center of it. It snaps anywhere within that that area. So that's something you you couldn't actually get it to snap directly to it. Is there a way to have the teleport point destination clamped to a nav mesh? So if you're pointing at a valid ground and moving it around, it stops along the nav mesh bounds. Well, you can already uh, limit to a nav mesh anyway with the teleporter. So there's a, an example scene that uses a nav mesh. Um, Bring up the nav mesh window. Where is it? I can never remember. Navigation. So it's already got a nav mesh in it, and we can't. We can only teleport within the nav mesh area. And all you need to do to turn that on is on the teleporter. You just say the distance that you can be from the nav mesh to teleport. Are you saying so when when you get to the edge of the nav mesh area or you, you you point outside of the nav mesh area it just stops at the nav mesh area? Rather than having the red cursor. Because there's nothing that does that at the moment. Somebody did raise an issue about this on GitHub um, about this snapping uh, let's see if we can find it. Um, nope. I don't think it was closed. Um, Button state, no, not that one. Pretty sure somebody raised this on GitHub as they wanted it to do this. I can't see it now. 
Yeah, it's something that you can't do at the moment. It's not in there. Um, let's have a look at the closed issues. I can't see why I'd have closed it. Unless I linked it to something else. Yeah, I can't find it now. But yeah, you can't you can't do that at the moment because the way the pointers work is they're always cast out. That the pointer doesn't care where a nav mesh is or something. The pointer just cares that it's either within or without the nav mesh. You can't go now. I'll move. I'll move the pointer back because the ray is always being cast um, consistently. But something that can be looked at in the future, but you can't do it now. I was sure there was an issue for it that was raised. Oh well. Any other questions? See if there's any other things that have been added. Yeah, might have been on Slack. Um, I, th I just thought there was an issue for it. There's no plans for drawing or sculpting tools. Uh, not to say that they're not wouldn't be a thing to go in, but it's just a bit out of scope at the moment, and don't really have time for it. Uh, li limit the teleportation height. So if the bezier becomes the bezier becomes red if the height is greater than the maximum value. So you can't. Do you mean so you can't teleport down to a floor, for instance? Um, so if I was to go to this scene, run this scene. I don't want this one. I want the bezier pointer scene. Hang on. Run this scene, and we've got up here. So you could say, I can't teleport down to there, but I can teleport to maybe there. So what you need to do for that, again, this might not be on the Unity Asset Store version, um, but if you go into the te just teleporter, um, no, it's not on the teleporter, it's on the pointer. It's the length of the pointer. So you've got uh, a maximum length, which is uh, the X is it's forward because <laughs> it's a vector to it should really be Z, but ignore that. So the X is its forward, and the Y is always set to infinity. So if we were to set that to 5, maybe, that might be too big. We'll find out. Um, if we go up here now, yeah, that's still too big. Okay, let's drop it down to, like, 2. I think that's bigger than 2 up there. Right. No, still too big. Right, let's try one. Locomotion solved already. So if we go up here, can I get up there? This is weird. Why is this allowing me to teleport down? Oh, I'll tell you what, because I'm pointing it down, that's why. Look, if I point it straight, because it's, the, the cast is hitting off its, its forward one there, that's why, look. So if I point it straight, I can't go down. 
So you'd have to lower the the, uh, the forward one as well to like five, maybe. Yeah, that's a. I wonder if that could be solved another way. Because, like, when you're pointing it upwards, I can't touch the floor. But there's nothing to stop me from pointing it down and having that forward one hit me. But then. That might be. Well, see, the, the limit. Is doing what it's logically should be doing. There's two rays that get cast. There's a ray that goes forward and a ray that goes down. Uh, and you can limit the forward ray that's cast forward, but also the down ray. But that forward ray, when you point it down, obviously um, is hitting the target because that forward ray is allowed. Um, tell you what, you probably should do with that one. If you raise a GitHub issue with that, that's something that can be looked into. Um, because I feel that there's probably something that you can do, like a combination of the two, will work out the angle of the controller. And if the controller's angled down, then start taking the other one into consideration off its max length or something. Um, so raise a GitHub issue for it. How do you snap an object you are holding to the floor? Um, like you can't really use the uh, the rigid body fixing I don't think for that let's see if that works uh, I don't know if that will work locking it to y-value let's try I'm not sure if it will work so let's lock this so it's only got its x value. So if we lock it to y, if we lock it to y, and we lock it to z. We can only move it across its x. Oh no, it does work, kinda. But then we also need to lock its rotation. So if we lock the rigid body's rotation as well. Also, as well, you're probably better doing this with track. There you go. That that kinda does it, doesn't it? Although, that moves around, so if we were to change this to not use a joint, and to use track instead, uh, track object grab attach, that may work better, there you go, that works better, there, there you can, you can just lock it to rigid body then. And it'll uh, it'll only slide in that direction. Make a monitor where you use a mouse. You hold to what? Make a monitor where you use the mouse. You hold cursor on the monitor screen, and you can click with a mouse. I don't know. You asking how to do that? Simulate an in-game mouse. Oh, you could. Well, you could do what we've just done there. So we could lock its uh, sex y, and z position like this. Um, now I can move this around. 
and then just listen to the clicks and wherever I'm moving this you just translate that information the uh, X and Y information of this into uh, a graphic on the screen that wouldn't be that hard to do you see so this would be our mouse and then we just listen for the wherever it's uh, the transform position is we just update something on the screen um, and then wherever, whenever we press the trigger, when we're holding it, we just translate that into a mouse click. So you'd know the default position of this when you start grabbing it, and then you'd know the position of the, the mouse pointer on screen. Um, or you could get the, the delta between where this was and where it now is and then use that as the axis for where the mouse is moved on the screen. That could also work. Maybe. the moved distance of you don't need to get the moved distance so much you can just take its current transform position information so if you look at its transform here when we grab this you see its X and its Z is changing so you just need to translate those numbers into the X and probably a Y of another game object or even a sprite on the screen so You'd need to do a bit of maths. <laughs> Off the top of my head, I don't know the exact way to do it, but that's how I'd do it. Is I'd just take that transform information, or as I was saying, you could take the delta of what the current x and current z is, uh, minus the previous one, to know if it's been moved plus or minus and then just translate that into an axis for the mouse you could do that as well again it's probably a little bit in depth to, to cover that sort of thing on here uh, because I could I could spend probably a couple of hours writing it. Yeah, what Drudge says. Yeah, you, you definitely need custom code for it, but yeah. So the object Z is the Y. Do some scaling. I don't think it'd be too hard to do. You just need to sit down and have a go at getting it to work. But you have your, your information based off the X and the Z of the object that you're dragging around. So you just need to use that information to translate it to the, uh, the pointer on the screen. And then you have to know where that pointer is on the screen to then, if you're over an icon or something, when you click um, to, to make sure you, you run the relevant thing in the background. It's one of those things that potentially when we redo all the example scenes for VRTK, so the, the kind of concept at the moment for the example scenes is at the moment they're all like uh, these individual things, but we're looking to do like one big kind of like play area example scene. And then um, you, you can go into like specific rooms where each one is like an individual thing, this say you do grab and this say you do teleport and etc. like it is now. But in that main area one, we're gonna have things like a house in there. Maybe one of the rooms could have a computer in and we can demonstrate how to build a mouse and, and play around potentially. How to make clone of you that mirror your moving with hands. What? I don't know what that means again. How to make clone I haven't tried edit editor VR. Um, just can't be bothered to download the uh, the thing off GitHub to try it. But it looks all right. It looks good. I like the way that Epic have built it straight into Unreal, though. I 
I wish Unity would build their straight into the Unity engine rather than have it a separate thing. Maybe they will in a future version. I know they like to test stuff out separately and then um, build stuff in. So hopefully uh, they'll do that. We shall see. Yeah, it'd be nice if they did. Like I know they're going to bring uh, Text Mesh Pro into the Unity, which is cool because the current Unity text handling is a bit rubbish in comparison to Text Mesh Pro. I'm pretty sure they're bringing in the Blueprint system like Playmaker or something like that. I don't know if it is going to be Playmaker or their own. I think it might be Playmaker because obviously the Blueprint's within uh, Unreal's Wicked as well. Have clone that do all you and grab item and can grab items. What do you mean by a clone? You mean like uh, like you move around, but there's like a, a like an animated character in the scene that's picking stuff up, but it's not you. It's something else. You can do that sort of stuff because somebody did it um, with Final IK. Uh, Jim the Grim made um, a robotic arm that he could control and could pick stuff up. Um, I don't know how he did it. I don't know if it's going to be Playmaker that they use. Uh, that's just kind of like what I heard and it seems like an obvious choice but I'm pretty sure they're going to implement uh, a blueprinting system not that I use blueprinting systems so I'm not really uh, used to them like your VR character twice so what so you pick stuff up and then you've got a, somebody next to you that's copying your yeah you'd have to rig like a no, well, Final IK obviously does inverse kinematics, so you can rig something to copy your movements, and Final IK has got the VR IK stuff in that can uh, apply inverse kinematics based on where your controllers and where trackers are and stuff like that. So you could do that effectively. How you'd do it without Final IK, I have no idea. You'd have to write your own inverse kinematics system. Or, I know there's one in in Unity isn't there, but Final Light Cake's worth the money if you want to do inverse kinematics. I know they keep putting it on sale, I got it for like $45. You probably could, yeah. It depends what you want, depends if you want like a fully animated character doing it or if you just wanted like floaty head and floaty arms yeah you could just clone them as an offset get them to follow the headset and the controllers around Are there any other questions? I'm going to be online for another 10 minutes. I think I'm going to try to limit the streams to an hour and a half. Um, and try and get as much in that hour and a half as possible. Otherwise, if I have it too long, I end up seem to be a lot of waffling. Um, and if they're too short, obviously not enough people to get to ask their questions. So... Um, yeah, if it's only the hands and head, you could do what... Uh, Drudge said, so let's try that. Um, just really basic, maybe. Uh, let's just load this scene again. And let's just try this. So, uh, a sphere, 
We'll do iPhone one, iPhone one, iPhone one, and we'll put it zero, and we just remove this for now, and then we'll do transform follow, and we'll get it to follow the right controller, and we want it to change the sphere, and if I just do this quickly, turn my headset around. Oh, I got a minute. Um, I don't want it to follow the scale off the off, just the rotation. So now that's following that. So if I was to give this an offset of one, oh no, because it's going to follow the. Ah, tell you what we can do delete this, create an empty game object and we'll add transform follow to that and we want it to follow the right controller, we want it to change the game object but we don't want it to change the scale, actually we do want it to change the scale and then in here we're going to add a sphere and we'll scale that down and we'll give that an offset of 1. Um, right, that should work, maybe, there we go, <laughs> so it's following our control around, maybe I don't want to give that the offset of 1, it's X, I want to give the offset of 1 too, there we go, so it's kind of over to our right now. And you could do one with the headset as well, and it'd, they'd follow that around. Um, have I talked to any Unity executives? Um, yeah, I do talk to some people from Unity. I talk to the people uh, on the XF uh, Foundation Toolkit, XR Foundation Toolkit. Um, I'm not sure how excited they are with VRTK, how interested they are with it. I think they're happy with it. Hopefully when I'm at Unite Europe I'll speak to a lot more Unity people. Um, well to mirror it you'd, you'd need to uh, you'd probably want to write custom code to mirror it. So you pick it. It's the same concept though. You, you'd pick up the right controller's transform position and then you'd, you'd want to do some uh, matrix calculations to flip it to flip the uh, the position. But you definitely probably need to use custom code for that because this transform follow code just follows it back by an offset. Unless you could put minuses in here. I don't know if that would work. So it's kind of at the side, but you don't want it at the side, do you? you want it in front of you and copying what you're doing. So I don't want to do that. I don't know which one it is, it's not that one, is it? Oops, what happened there? That's just on top of me, isn't it? Um, yeah, you probably need to do some custom code because this isn't technically mirroring, is it? This is just following. Mm, I suppose it is mirroring. But then when you do that, it's no, it's it's actually following what you want it to do is stay there, don't you, and move up accordingly. Um, yeah, I wouldn't use this transform follow at all to do that. Um, I'd get the information of the controller. Put the transform on the game object. The transform that's what is doing the following, but I wouldn't. 
I probably wouldn't do that anyway. I'd, I'd control the sphere based on the the rotate because it's the rotational information that you want to do. Just realised my uh, my night mode has kicked in. Can I turn night mode off? Uh, no, there's no 3D spatial audio, but you can use the Steam uh, spatial audio plugin, which is pretty cool. Uh, can I turn night mode off? I can set it to off, but it doesn't do anything. That's clever. The screen's got a red hue over it now because of night mode that I can't turn off. Nice. Night light settings. Can you just turn off? I'll turn on now. I don't want it on. Turn off now. Worst feature ever. Has that gone off? There we go. That's gone off. Right, four more minutes, and then I'm going to look to wrap up the stream. I um, hope it's been useful for people. Uh, if you have any uh, ideas of what you want to see from these live streams, please let me know, um, whether it's in the Slack channel, invite.vitk.io, or on Twitter, so you can follow me on Twitter, which is at the underscore stone fox or you can follow the vrtk twitter which is at vr underscore toolkit um or you can write a github uh, issue um with things that you want to see that also help when you teleport to capsule destination points floating in space takes you to distant heights. Oh, is this that thing where it snaps you down? Um, so if you wanted to move into space, yeah, there's... So you can do this manually. I'm guessing you mean this, so if we were to take this one and move it up there, when you teleport, you want, you're want you saying you want to appear up there, aren't you? But it doesn't actually put you up there. I can't even reach that. Oh, there we go. It puts you down there, yeah. This is a problem with the height adjust teleporter. Uh, the height adjust teleporter always snaps you back to your relevant location. Um, so I wonder, and there's nothing you can do about it, um, because the basic teleporter doesn't let you change your Y, so you can't even take this out and change it. See, this... The, the height just teleport always snaps you to the nearest floor. Um, what you could do is you could put an invisible floor up there with it. Uh, so if you were to do this, put an invisible floor and just remove its mesh. Like that. That's one way around it, but I think there might be potential of using another teleporter so that would do it you see that snaps yeah if you put invisible floors under them um, so that's probably a quick workaround scaling the player for steam VR you mean just scaling the camera rig down You can just scale the camera rig. So if you take, uh, uh, we'll set it to 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2. Now when I start the scene, everything should be huge to me. So you can see I'm very small. 
and we've got he's it's like I'm in giant land and we actually need to change the pointers because they're too big uh, curves a radius probably 0.2 um, that's still probably too big well, that's not too bad there you go look it looks like I'm a giant now well I'm not a giant I'm in a I've been shrunken and you can do the opposite as well if you wanted you can uh, take that camera rig and scale it up to let's say 3 and then go to like a god mode You can see, look, I'm, a, I'm, I'm in God mode now. But you can change the scale of you just by changing your uh, camera rig scale. I hope that's helpful. Right, it's 9.30 now, so I'm going to start wrapping this stream up. Um, what can I say to go? I'm just going to say thanks everyone for watching. Um, I hope it's been helpful for people. Uh, please consider joining the Slack channel if you're not already a member of the Slack channel. It's full of really helpful people that will help on all sorts of things. Uh, I'm in there as well, but don't rely on me to help you because I'm busy in the week with my day job. Um, but if you're not a member of the Slack channel, join at uh, invite.vrtk.io uh, and again follow me on twitter at the, uh, the underscore stone fox or at vr underscore toolkit uh, subscribe to the youtube channel and you'll get notices of any new tutorials coming out uh, there's going to be uh, a live stream now every week uh, at sunday 8 p.m uk time uh, because we've now hit that uh, point on the Patreon which is awesome and again I just want to give a big shout out to the professional sponsor that's made that possible which is realestate.com.au so thank you very much to you guys for the sponsor um, also finally I will be at Unite Europe so if you are going to the Unity conference in Amsterdam hopefully I will see you there um, and that's it. I've just, I'll just i tell you one other thing I'll do as well. I'll say make sure to check out Fuseman's channel on YouTube and check out um, his live streams every Saturday. At, he does them at like 10 a.m. his time, which works out to be 6 p.m. UK time on Saturdays. But it's definitely worth watching for cool stuff as well. Um, patron link. All right, I'll send you a patron link. Hang on. Uh, the patron link is that so if you want to donate you can donate the point of the patron as well is not for me to earn money on this a lot of people say that I'm making money out of this I haven't made any money out of VRTK uh, the patron link uh, is for people to donate so we can build a pot of money up enough to then bring in more professional services to, to do stuff that I'm not I don't have the skill set to do If you're struggling with stuff, uh, William Tucker, the best thing to do is go into the Slack channel. There's tons of people in the Slack channel that have that have done custom controllers and they've got custom controllers in their games. So if you ask that sort of question in there, hopefully you'll get helped out relatively quickly. So um, that's it for me. I'm going to go now. Thank you ever so much for watching, everybody. Um, and I'll be in the Slack channel uh, like now anyway and there's a bunch of people in there anyway as it is uh, and I will be doing another YouTube video hopefully this Tuesday uh, probably gonna do two because I was supposed to do more last month and didn't get the one finished so I'm probably gonna do two this Tuesday um, and that's it for me so thank you everyone for watching and bye for now